I bought two used RTX 3070s on Facebook Marketplace for $450, which felt like an absolute steal. But buying used graphics cards is always a tricky situation. It's not like a car where you can take it for a test drive and see the service history. And on top of that, because you're buying a smaller item, you're more prone to getting mugged, unfortunately. There are some things that you can do to protect yourself, make sure that the buyer has a good rating, meet up in a public place, and don't hand over the cash before you have the item in hand. But all of these things only protect you from getting mugged. What protects you from buying a dead graphics card? Nothing. So unless you wanna buy a bricked graphics card with no way of getting in touch with the seller again, you just have to go to their house. I got lucky and the seller didn't mug me, fortunately. But as we go through the segments of the video, I'm gonna put a red flag counter on the screen just to show you how many mistakes I actually made and how many things I overlooked. So he was very welcoming and I walked into his room where he ran his business from and he had a bunch of graphics cards in that room, but a lot of them were disassembled. He also needed to make it quick because he had somewhere to be and he would only accept cash and couldn't tell me how long it had been in this mining rig for. And of course, when he took the card out of the box, it had a little bit of corrosion on it, which I shouldn't have overlooked. In amongst all of these red flags going on, obviously I was still excited and I wanted to test these cards anyways. So we threw the first one on his rig, powered the PC up, and the second, and I tell you, the second it posted, he turned off the power supply and he said something along the lines of, yeah, if it posts, it works, red flag. All of a sudden, we didn't have time to test the second one, and he told me that I could trust him and I could go home and test it myself. Obviously, at this point, I knew that there were no guarantees with the second card, but I was excited to see that the first one worked and I was willing to take the risk. So I got home, plugged the card into my PC, and unfortunately, nothing happened. The fans didn't spin up and I got no video output. Now, if you are in a situation like that and you have a card that's not working, there are some basic things that you can do to try get it working again or just make sure that the card itself is actually the problem. Firstly, you should reset your CMOS by unplugging your computer, taking out the CMOS battery and bridging the connection between the positive and negative lines on the battery connector. You should also go into the BIOS and make sure that all of your settings are set to default and then double check that the graphics card slot is enabled. At this point, it's also important to make sure that your test bench itself works without the graphics card in the equation. So boot it up, make sure you get into Windows and make sure that everything is working fine. Once you know that that's working, you can now introduce the graphics card and try boot up. Now, if that's still not working, it doesn't necessarily mean that the graphics card itself is broken. It could be that your PCIe slot is broken. So try another graphics card in the same slot and see if that posts. In my case, it did. And that told me that the graphics card that I bought from the guy was busted. But that doesn't mean that that's the end of the testing. So what I did next was I plugged both graphics cards into the PC, booted up using one of the graphics cards, downloaded all of the applicable drivers, and then checked if the broken graphics card showed up inside of Device Manager on Windows. Unfortunately, it didn't. And this tells me that the graphics card is not being read and it's probably not getting any power at all. So, like me, you found yourself in the position where you bought a graphics card, you've done all the tests that you can, and it just doesn't work. What do you do? Well, step one, you can try to RMA the card. This is probably the best case scenario because you could end up with a brand new graphics card, but if the card is outside of its warranty window or you don't have the original invoice because you bought it used, I'm sorry, but you're out of luck. But lots of people will strip their card down to its bare bones, clean it with some isopropyl alcohol to get off the corrosion, the dirt and the grime, reapply brand new thermal paste, put it back together, and in many cases, it actually fixes the card and it just works again. If that doesn't work, you could also buy a multimeter and follow a guide that shows you how to test each and every little component on the board. If you're skilled enough to find the problem, you're able to track down the part that you need and skilled enough to solder that part back into place, you could very easily save your graphics card. And the worst case scenario that no one wants to go through is you could throw the card in the oven. What this will basically do is heat up all of the solder to the point where it becomes liquid again. It reseats itself with a better connection. And when you take the card out and cool it down, maybe the broken connections that were there are no longer broken. I was way too scared to do that. So I caved in and I sent it to a professional. While this is all very disappointing, many lessons have been learned. Look for the red flags and don't let excitement cloud your judgment. 
I love gaming and I trust gamers, but that attitude let me down. So be professional, be thorough, and don't take risks. Safe shopping, guys. I hope that helped.